welcome back to the VM Workshop 2021. Our next speaker is Wilhelm Mild from Boblingen, Germany, and he's going to take us through some Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform news. So over to you, Willie. Okay, so welcome. Yes, over from Germany, through the air to the world. Why you should look at OpenShift, Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform, especially on IBM Z and IBM Linux One. Yeah, VM workshop virtual, but I hope next time, you know, we can have a beer together and uh, be face to face there. Let's see what I have prepared here. And I'm starting, I'm doing a step back in terms of why that's the, the you know, the accent on why I should look at uh, the OpenShift at, least, um, at all. And first, first of all, we're talking today about these multi-speed IT environments where we know our backend systems on the, on the right side, our core enterprise systems with our core databases and, and services and all that are more steady in speed than we have the front ends and the, the digital ecosystem that comes with new ideas and new functions and new services and new requirements and new business uh, ideas. And they need to integrate at the end with, with the core enterprise. So, so the trend is, how do I do that in the most efficient way today? And how can I transform or how can I bring that into a format, into a process to do that in future? So therefore, you know, things like life cycle, increase the speed to get, you know, new functions out. That's one of the buzzwords that, that is today in, in the, everybody's IT. Flexibility, microservices. Can we get with microservices more, more flexible? Uh, where do we want to, and where do we need microservices or what is it to implement them? How can we implement them? Uh, efficiency, so implementation of microservices, then the efficiency of implementing them is typically associated with containers. So if you do microservices and implement them in containers, you get a quicker uh, orchestration of these uh, microservices and increase the flexibility. DevSecOps integration end to end is another um requirement that that we hear all day long you know development how to integrate that with operation but in a secure way end to end with self-service with automation and last but not least the faster deployments with con uh, continuous integration continuous deployments so therefore these are the buzzwords and let's see now if you're going or looking into how the the the, the work is transformed today um, we can we can get these together and we can help with the newer technology or the newest technologies um, around containerization and, and OpenShift. Now, the, 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 the idea is everybody wants to hear about cloud, whatever cloud means, because talking to five people, you have six or seven different meanings, because if you're talking about cloud, it becomes foggy, right? It is foggy because everybody thinks cloud is, is something different depending on what they need and cloud solves all the problems so that's why if you look at billboard and look at cloud uh, that's a very nice uh, comic where the, the answer to everything is you know from a little boy he shows a picture and everything that was asked on that on that questionnaire the answer was cloud because he says you know the the, the answer to all the questions today is cloud so therefore um when we're talking about cloud, I think we should talk about what is really needed in terms of flexibility, in terms of what I meant before, the characteristics. It's not about having something to put on, in, in, in a foggy space, some uh, everything, and, and solving all the problems. So therefore, it's about hybrid services or services being in different architectures, being on, on different environments, integrating one with traditional transactional and data services and then the overall integration of those so basically the cloud service model is the end-to-end -end orchestration with automation and self-service and eventually we charge back for what we, which we need in most of the cases now for this for this purpose the focus is with ibm on red hat open shift because it is the only container platform that works across different hardwares and even across different clouds. 
And you can look now what's out there on the market. And I'm coming to one chart where I have a couple more mentioned. The different offerings on the market, they are typically focused on x86, not even on the, 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 you know, the, the raising star with ARM, with, which is on the horizon, but then not, not even talking about IBM Power, IBM Z, IBM Linux One, or the different clouds, because typically these guys are also focusing on a, a one cloud and not multiple ones. With OpenShift Container Platform, you can have you know, those, those uh, things covered, and I'm showing you what I mean with that. It's not just having an, an umbrella. It is more than that. Is it, it is even developing. It is even more, it, it's towards orchestration and towards um, servicing those, those environments from a full stack automation to a full stack continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment pipeline. Is 100% there what I'm talking here? Probably not. And probably not everything you would like to have or, or all the wishes, but it's, that's, that's the, the, the area where the development is going. And I think that's a, an, an, a big step forward that that we have if you're looking at this uh, at these environments from that perspective. Now let's see. Um, IBM said we, we want to build or be the leading hybrid multi-cloud provider together with Red Hat based on the hybrid multi-cloud uh, open shift mindset. So building that multi-cloud platform we need to be able to run on all the hardware. And I, and I mentioned it before, you see that here as an infrastructure, IBM Z, Linux One, Power, IBM Cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Clouds. OpenShift runs on all these. It's the foundation. And if it is the foundation, it is basically coming with a baseline that you can build on top of it. And to build on top of it, you need to have components in that baseline for the different areas that you want to, to consider in an IT environment. And I'm talking about infrastructure, I'm talking about application, I'm talking about service, I'm talking about life cycle, I'm talking about these things, even monitoring and all that. On top of this foundation with, uh, with OpenShift, which by the way, is not based on a Linux, a traditional Linux, it is based on CoreOS. And CoreOS itself, is an extraction or is a subset of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, enhanced with secure uh, Enterprise Linux, SE Linux, and build it or, or made very compact that it can be deployed very quickly in a cloud fashion. That's why CoreOS. And then now on top of this, of this foundation, IBM builds the software um, solutions, and not just IBM, but the IBM software, you see that coming in more and more into so-called IBM cloud packs. And then they're called cloud packs because the, they're, they're, they're uh, um, grouped around some topics like multi-cloud management or data management or integration or automation, security applications. So these kind of things, that's why IBM cloud packs. And on top of that then are the services where IBM uh, is building and having those services to advise and, and uh, build the environments for it. So with this in mind, OpenShift is the, the foundation, right? And the cloud packs, the, so the software layer. Now, when we're looking at those, those cloud packs, they base on the OpenShift platform and OpenShift itself by, by itself bases on Kubernetes. So it's not an invention that it is not standard or it is out of any sync. OpenShift bases on the Kubernetes platform. So it's basically an enterprise Kubernetes platform with additional functionalities. And therefore, if IBM builds the, the, the software packages, the software solutions or the software components in containers and puts them in, in these cloud packs, they are coming with a common operational with common operational services. They're coming with logging, monitoring enabled. Uh, they're coming with access to a persistent storage in a Kubernetes fashion. And, and they're coming with identity access management and so on. So therefore, this, this is the way that you will see in the future going more and more to have these kind of offerings and not just from IBM, from other vendors as well, 
that are going towards an, a faster management and a faster deployment capability. And that is based on the Kubernetes artefa artifacts. And these are the operators. Operators are basically the description, how you deploy, what you need to deploy. You know, in the, in the past, we had something like a response file where you install your DB2 with, or you installed your MQ with. So, the, so that's, that's how you can imagine these operators. That, that you install that in an OpenShift environment and all the artifacts are built under the cover uh, when you install that, that product or multiple products in a cloud pack, okay? So from that high level, um, a comparison now is that is OpenShift the only one on the market? It is not the only one. We have a couple more capability or, or a couple more orchestration products like Pivotal Cloud Foundry, SUSE Rancher, but from, an, from a positioning perspective today, OpenShift is the only one that can run on, on, the, on the different architectures, platforms, including Z and Linux One. There is no other that can do that today. Okay? We have seen that uh, SUSE Rancher announced that they, they uh, intend to bring something for Z, but right now, OpenShift is the only one. And the differentiation between these, um, these orchestration products is basically the on top or the Kubernetes on top uh, tool sets that, that are delivered. So therefore different uh, uh, products or uh, different offerings are having different tool sets supporting different sites from an entire environment. And that's where the differentiation is. But they typically all base on Kubernetes and, and then Kubernetes itself is the, the software that can orchestrate containers. Think of Kubernetes cannot run containers. Kubernetes can orchestrate them. You still need a container runtime to run those containers. And that's where the differentiation came with Red Hat on that side as well, because a couple of years ago, we all talked about Docker. When somebody talked about the container, it was you know, equalized with, with Docker and the Docker tool set. Well, the ecosystem changed and the ecosystem is highly diversified these days and it is standardized through the OCI initiative, the Open, uh, open Source Container Initiative. And this, this uh, initiative is building the, the standardization for the container images. So if you, the, no matter which, which uh, uh, tool you, you take, you can build a container which is OCI compliant. The differentiation is some access that that needs to be needs to be there or not one differentiate a big differentiation for example is that docker needs root access for container and the the tool set that is used by openshift and red hat is podman and builder podman and builder can build rootless containers that means you do not need to be root to add or to use that container and that's why in some situations when you're using OpenShift, you cannot use Docker containers because they need root access and OpenShift inhibits that. So there, there you can see if there is a compatibility or, a, or not between a Docker container and a, a container that can be used in OpenShift. Now the containers in a, in a uh, Kubernetes uh, mindset are not single entities which are in a Docker environment. In a Kubernetes environment, we are talking about groups of containers or pods. So a pod is a group of container that is based on a namespace typically. And a group of container can be one container or can be multiple containers in that pod. And the differentiation between Docker that is based on a single container and a pod is in pods, the pod has an IP address to the external site, not the container itself, Internally, the pod internal is using NAT, so basically it's an internal uh, communication. In, in a Docker fashion, you, every single container has its own IP address. Okay, so here are the differentiations. And, and, uh, and another differentiation between Docker and Podman, the environment and, and uh, the, the runtime cryo that, that is used in, in OpenShift is that Docker is using a single daemon that, that you need to run in, in every single guest, Linux, uh, Linux guest that, that your container are managed with. If, and that's a single point of failure. 
Well, Podman is, is like is function as a service. So basically it is it is started when it is needed and it is quiet if it's not needed. So basically it is a, a different way of working. And that's why when we're talking here OpenShift, when we're talking Red Hat, even Red Hat Enterprise Linux since version eight is not supporting Docker anymore. You do not get Docker anymore, you get Podman and Build Up and the Cryo uh, environment. Okay, so with that said, Kubernetes on, uh, on the bottom. So we start here with Red Hat Core OS for OpenShift. We have Kubernetes, the container orchestration, and then we have on top Kubernetes cluster services that are Kubernetes services. And on top of these services now are the OpenShift container platform specifics, the OpenShift container platform uh, values that are going towards the platform services, application services, data services, and developer services. So what you see is that the container platform is looking at the entire picture and the entire spectrum that you would need to handle applications, to handle an infrastructure and handle services from a lifecycle perspective, from a development perspective, deployment perspective, and even from a data perspective in terms of access and uh, security. On top of this, this container platform is then something that is getting more and more important. And I can tell you, this is the one that, that you will see um, very, how can I say, um, welcome changes. Let me say that way. The multi-cluster management is a component, uh, and that's Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management, RHACM, and multi-cluster management that are going to be a very important piece that um, that will evolve in all directions. Right now we have the um, we have it available to manage multiple clusters already. So you can build environments that are having clusters in different um, architectures and you can manage that from an uh, Red Hat, um, advanced cluster management um, component. Okay, now let's go to see a little bit deeper or a little bit more of, of a why I said, you know, Having, having this uh, OpenShift container platform now, why should I even consider it uh, on, on, open, on, on Z and Linux One? And I can tell you, we have the highest number of started projects I've ever seen in my 30 years career. This, this number, and I'm talking about the number from the last 12 months that so many projects and, and the, the enthusiasm is so high towards OpenShift, it is unbelievable. Uh, and and even, even with the pandemic that we, that we had in the last 12 months, it was unbelievable busy to see how customers are looking and trying out and building those environments. Why? And the, the business reasons is because the faster time to market and with the pandemic, they, they, we have seen that we need, you know, to react much faster, to have a dynamic workload. That's why it, it helps on that side. Um, development challenges. Develop once, deploy on, on multiple sites, deploy on multiple architectures, uh, include into uh, DevSecOps and CICD. Um, enable hybrid IT projects and benefit from the capability to develop once, but place the or start those applications where your SLA is needed. So basically, if you need the highest security for a certain application, you will start it on typically on a Z and Linux One platform. If you need a read-only application and you want to, you know, you have those those uh, times when uh, the uh, customers or or clients are are requ uh, requiring or in inquiring data, you can build or start uh, such services on. Uh, on an, an another scalable platform or even on public cloud. So therefore, these are things that, that are, are coming with one technology or with the technology built in in OpenShift. The digitalization journey with uh, standards, standards openness, uh, including Z now, there is no, you know, there is, there, there's no reason why you should say, well, this open standard is not on Z. It comes together and it comes at the same time on all platforms. The versions of OpenShift are coming at the same time on all platforms, and therefore, it is the way um, to to build uh, that, those environments. And then confidential computing, another point that is very important, highly secure workloads with digital assets that we're seeing 
being able to be managed with OpenShift as well, and business continuity, where it uh, inherits the availability, reliability, stability of Z and Linux One. So these are business reasons, not the technical reasons. We're coming to them in a minute, but the business reasons where you know, from a high-level perspective, it makes sense to look and evaluate: is it for the business that you're running the the the, the technology you want to go into in future? It's not a, an, 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 a big shift in terms of, you know, that, that from today to tomorrow, you need to do it. It is a path that you go from, you know, slowly into it. And the faster you go, the better, the better it is. But it is not something that you need to turn off and on from uh, one day to another. And the collocation of existing hybrid uh, or the, the hybrid environments, the collocation with existing transactional and data services, that's basically where I see the power, where we can go in future and exploit the power of these flexible capabilities and um, the transactional speeds and, and the, the data that, that we have today. Now, um, a, couple of, a couple of arguments that are more technical here is our, our tests have shown we can start thousands of Linux tests, we can run millions of containers, we can build con con uh, confidential cloud clouds on on the on the systems, and there are capabilities like like the compression, um, like our, our secure chips that that are available on on Z15 and Linux One Three and on Linux Three Express. We have now a new announcement that is even very attractive from a financial perspective to build those environments. Okay, now how is the such environment looking like? The platform, so OpenShift is the platform in that case to run hybrid multi workloads on the same platform on one or multiple CACs, of course, but you can run them even together. So I can have multiple of these clusters, OpenShift clusters. I don't need to have just one. I can have multiple of those clusters. I can have them side by side with my Linux on Z, with transactional services or data or I can have them side by side with ZOS or both. So therefore, the capability to run these multiple different hybrid workloads on the same machines, on the same architecture, is an advantage that we have seen. And we have, that, we have heard about the advantages from Marcel Mitran at the beginning um, yesterday on, on the keynote. He showed those those uh, customer scenarios. I took them out from IDEX, so therefore we're talking more technology than in uh, in here. So that's the capability. Now, a minimal cluster, and that was a surprise for some of our clients, is that you need three, or you need at least five guests in a hypervisor. This is the minimal. So you need one LPAR. And you need five guests in an, LPR, in an hypervisor. Those uh, five guests are three control planes or master nodes. We called, you know, they were called master nodes. The, the, the name changed slightly to control planes. Why three? Because again, think of that OpenShift is based on Kubernetes. And Kubernetes is working in a high availability mode. It comes per design in a high availability mode and needs three master nodes for quorum, for high availability. So you at least two of them need to survive that your cluster can be operated. And that's why you need three to have quorum, to have N plus one uh, the, uh, to, to, to be available. And then you have your worker nodes or compute nodes where you can run your workload. So the minimum is. As I see, as I show you here, one LPAR with five guests. The, the hypervisor, you need to have it virtualized today. The hypervisor can be ZVM starting with 7.1 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux KVM 8.3. So that's the hypervisor that you need to uh, think of. And the minimum of, of the capacity that you need is shown on this picture. And we had some, uh, some, um, implementations or tries to, uh, for implementations, trying on a very small footprint, please, you need a, at least three IFLs to start working with that because that's an enforcement in OpenShift. 
if you start to to uh, install it, it comes back. Uh, if you start installing it on on a, on, on fewer capacity it comes back and cannot finish. So therefore, it's one LPAR minimum, three IFLs with SMT2 enabled on a Z13 or newer or on a Linux one. And then you see the memories that you need per node and, and, and so on. So therefore, these are the minimum ones. And we have a very effective document where you can read and you can plan for that. That's the reference architecture. So the Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform reference architecture for Z and Linux One is on my one of my last slides where I have the links available. It's available for everyone, for customers, partners, IBM, system integrators, for everyone. I made it available for everyone. So therefore, um, you can see there what are the network options, what are these options uh, for capacity and storage. Now. I said this is the minimum. If you want to have a production environment, you typically want to have not just one LPAR, you want to spread that because of high availability across LPARs. And that's why what you need to have is basically recommended three nodes or three sites. How can I say three, uh, three uh, levels of separation or three LPARs if you want. These three LPARs can be on the same keg can be on two kecks or can be on three kecks. And that's where the discussion then comes. If I have it on two keck, how do I do high availability? The, we have responses to these discussions. So if you have those, those challenges, come to me, let's talk about it because it depends from case to case. What are your requirements? What is your, what is your uh, main data center? What is your disaster uh, data center? How is that configured in terms of distance, in terms of um, replication uh, speed? and in terms of capacity and we can build that up so that you you get happy with a high availability or a disaster recovery scenario the most questions i got in the last month let me say from the beginning of these implementations were about storage red hat open shift is if you see it from that perspective or as shown on this page it is an application set right we have control planes with some some uh, components running there and we have infrastructure nodes that that might run some some special pods and compute nodes for the workload for your applications now you have to have two different types of storage and that's what you need to consider number one is number one is the hypervisor storage shown on the on the left side the hypervisor storage is the one that you have to install the guests and to run those guests. So therefore, it's the hypervisor storage that you need to consider for, you know, you want to have the hypervisor guests in ECKD or on SCSI disks, or you want to have them um, on the disks that you already have a DSAK, though that's your decision. The container storage is the storage that is needed for the applications that are running containerized inside OpenShift. So there are two different types, and we're coming to that point where and what you can use. The hypervisor storage, as I said, it's for the control planes and compute nodes and infrastructure nodes as guests. So basically, it's a local storage that needs to be associated where, where you install your KVM and where you install uh, or, or build your, your guests for OpenShift. And as, as we have seen with, uh, in the previous presentation, we are talking today about UPI, user provisioned infrastructure. That means you as a user are responsible to build the hypervisor, to build the guests and give them the storage to install in those guests, the components for OpenShift, okay? You can attach them through FICON, FCP or iSCSI today. So basically, that's these are the options that you have right your SCSI disks your flash system or your um, FICON your DSAK can be installed or can be used as hypervisor storage now with this what we what we realize what we uh, have here is we then have the infrastructure that we can install OpenShift into 
Now, installing OpenShift will automatically install components. It will install CoreOS and it will install uh, the control planes and, and will install compute nodes. And as a day two operation, you can decide to run certain pods instead of compute nodes as infrastructure nodes. That has also an impact for, for subscription. The control planes and infrastructure nodes are not, enti are not entitled or, uh, for subscription. Subscription is just for compute nodes. Okay, so you need to pay for compute nodes, not for the capacity for the others. Okay. Now, when we're looking at the hypervisor storage here, um, and then these two, what is the, the one that is on the far right, the shared file system here? And that's basically for container storage. So the container storage is at least one type of container storage, persistent, shared persistent storage you need for the container images. So if you install OpenShift, you need that shared persistent storage. And the question is, what kind of do you want? The answer is it depends on if you just want your, your container storage for uh, the container images, or you also want the application to use that, that uh, shared persistent storage for data. And I'm coming into a minute why it makes sense to think of that. It can be uh, a storage that is physically attached through a CSI interface, or it can be through a network interface, and we'll see that is IBM Spectrum Scale, the container native storage access. Now, OpenShift is working with storage based on a construct called persistent volume. So if you assign your ECKD, that's your DSA 1000 or your flash system to, um, through the CSI driver and, and the flash system and DSAK has a CSI driver from IBM. So you can bring that to uh, known to OpenShift through the CSI driver. Then you can define those persistent volumes the downside of that is this persistent volume is then assigned and it cannot be shared across different worker nodes. You can have multiple persistent volumes, but you cannot share them because there are local volumes. Typically, the shared persistent uh, storage is either NFS, spectrum scale, through the construct of container native storage access, or it is OpenShift container storage, which became available a couple of weeks ago. So we have these three options right now. Thinking of application, think of that your worker nodes are designed to uh, make sure that an application is not failing or is not stopping the service. And therefore, typically an application runs in multiple worker nodes, in pods, in multiple worker nodes. So the containers are not running on one worker node, they're running on multiple worker nodes. You can define that in OpenShift, what, uh, how many you want to have running at a certain point in time. Okay, and therefore, um, having that high availability uh, uh, request, if you're running those worker nodes in three LPARs, each worker node in one LPAR to have that high availability given, you wanna have a shared persistent storage that all three LPARs can access the same data if they work, uh, if that, that's one application and they work with the same data, right? So, so therefore, you have to think of how do I do that? And that's where these different persistent container storages come into the game, okay? Now, from, from a spectrum scale perspective, you have the container native storage access on the left side mentioned here, this bar, that is um, accessed through the CSI driver or the CSI. CSI stands for Container Storage Interface. And the Container Storage Interface is an API in OpenShift. So therefore, if a vendor, if a storage vendor uh, delivers storage or wants to deliver storage for OpenShift, they need to have a CSI driver for that storage so the, that you can um, bring it, that you can make it known in OpenShift. So here, we have the CSI driver and we have spectrum scale CNSA, so the, the, the container native storage access that can then access or through cross cluster mount access that spectrum scale storage cluster that eventually you have already in your environment. So if you have that, you have spectrum scale today, you can connect your OpenShift 
container um, platform to that same cluster through CNSA. Vice versa, if you introduce it new and we have a couple of customers which are asking themselves, how do I do my future? And, and they, they decided to go with Spectrum Scale as the storage pool for container native storage, but also for their other, uh, for their other requirements or for other applications and share that storage between Intel, Power, and Z. So therefore, Spectrum Scale can share that storage, okay? Now, the Spectrum Scale storage cluster can itself is built up by um, the uh, Spectrum Scale servers and the GUI that you have available to, to manage that, that can be on Z or can be outside, but you can build it on a separate LPAR on Z, for example, or if you have it on two data centers, you can build it on two data centers and build a stretched cluster on that. So therefore there are capabilities, but the, the, the attachment for, for uh, OpenShift is from a worker or from a uh, compute node perspective. You, as you see the master nodes, I still need to, to change the name here. The control planes basically do not need to be, act, to be attached to the spectrum scale cluster, they are using the local storage that you have for your uh, ZVM guests. Okay. Similar to what I uh, you, you saw before with spectrum scale, we have available with OpenShift container storage. Now that's similar. If you see here, the, con the OpenShift container storage is uh, with, with one big differentiate or two big differentiations. Number one, it is included in your OpenShift cluster, so it's not a remote. Um, attachment. It is included in the cluster. And OCS, so OpenShift Container Storage, accesses the disks and can, can use SCSI only today. That will change in future, but today we're, we're using it for SCSI uh, enabled, SCSI storage. And that gives you to the application a shared storage capability that is realized through OpenShift Container Storage on the disks that you um, assign to OCS. And the, you know, the sharing and the control of, of all that storage, um, software-defined storage is done through Rook, Nuba, and the underlying technology for the storage is Ceph. Okay. I hope I could give you a little bit, you know, a, information about these things because the most thing, the, the most question we get right now is what storage do i need can i use uh, my storage do i need a new storage what do i need to buy how do i need to build it so that's that's why i wanted to put in this this uh these charts now i i built three use cases where it shows you when to use what in terms of storage and especially container storage or shared storage so for an, for an OpenShift container platform application that accesses DB2 on ZOS or an Oracle on Linux, think of your application are accessing DB2 on ZOS or, D, or Oracle. So all you need your containers, uh, your shared um, storage for is basically your container images. And uh, your container images could be on an NFS, for example. So you do not need to have a huge implementation of um, spectrum scale if you don't have it yet but you can also use OpenShift container storage for that um, depending on how many of these of these uh, images you have and if I'm thinking of bigger environments sure it is recommended to use OCS or spectrum scale for for a use case two you have a, a Postgres and OpenShift container storage uh, um, platform that accesses that Postgres from OpenShift, therefore you need there something that is a shared storage and that is then either Spectrum Scale CNSA, Container Native Storage Access or OCS. And the, th the third uh, use case is about applications requiring a storage and HA across two hardware machines or two data centers. In this case as well, you need an, a storage solution that can be accessed at the same time from both sites, from both machines. And that's why spectrum scale, a, a stretch cluster, or um, a spectrum scale cluster in the middle would, would make it uh, possible. Um, or you would have OCS um, to, to each of those, those machines if you have the same cluster that would work as well. Okay? Now, 
OpenShift enables developer productivity. And I can just say there are lots of, of components that are made available recently and are made available towards enabling this pipeline, Maybe enabling DevSecOps, enabling the self-service provisioning and, 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 uh, and so on. I'll give you some examples. So DevOps, basically, it's a cultural thing. Um, it needs to, to have some transformation, uh, to be done some, with some transformation regarding to the development that we had in the last years. So therefore, DevSecOps is something that will become a mainstream more and more. So therefore, the point is that OpenShift is helping a lot towards doing that. First of all, on the right side, you see developer, the command line interface and the code ready workspaces, a development um, environment that is from the browser directly to OpenShift. So CRW, code ready workspaces, gives you the capability to develop applications without even installing a separate uh, IDE for development. And then the Red Hat runtimes give you the capability to have the different uh, frameworks available on that, that's all on Z here that we're talking about the capabilities now with OpenShift and the enhancements that OpenShift comes with. As a second, pipelines technology, known also as Tekton, is to automate the process. And as I mentioned before, you know, we are talking about and think of DevSecOps and CI CD. That's where enabling this um, capability with Tekton is is the the, the co component to to have and must have to do that service mesh another component that uh, brings simplification and simplification in terms of um, secure communication visualization and therefore without service mesh you see you you would have five different layers um, to to build that service service mesh is covering that in a very consistent way so therefore, it brings you the capability in a uniform way to connect and manage your containers or microservices-based applications. And last but not least, serverless. One of the things that we hear that we heard a lot in the in the past regarding how do I implement functions that are not requiring uh, capacity when the when they're not running. So basically, serverless is the deployment model that allows to uh, scale up and down very quickly without requiring deep insight in the underlying inf infrastructure. It's an application thing that the application by itself knows how to scale and how to breathe, let me say that way, in an efficient way. And therefore, that's, that's what makes DevOps up, right? We're talking about building the code, provisioning, deploying, releasing, monitoring, um, so, and, and having the CI CD pipeline from the test to coding and building again, and, and that's where the automation comes in the, in the game. One thing that is, that uh, was a request for and, and is, is an, and a very helpful mechanism is how do I develop once and deploy to all different architectures? Well. Deploy the developing on an x86, which is typically done, you know, on a laptop or somewhere. You you de you de uh, develop those uh, those containers, read the configuration, and then you are able to use a tool called Argo CD. And if you're looking at Argo CD was uh, or is a vendor, and OpenShift is now describing in their documentation how to include Argo CD to deploy. The, or uh, build the, the, the containers that you developed on x86 to build those containers on the different architectures in OpenShift itself. So basically, developing in OpenShift x86, building those um, containers on the different platforms, including IBM Z and Linux One. So therefore, you have then containers which are available on IBM Z based on the development that was done on x86, OpenShift to OpenShift, okay? Now, if you want to develop applications in OpenShift, you have four different methods. First of all, from source code. So you have a GitHub repository where your source code in. 
and on OpenShift, you have two different um, dashboards. One is for developer, the other one is for administration, for admins. In the developer dashboard, you have here uh, the capability from Git, from a Git repository to include your source code and build the container and the artifacts for, for uh, um, OpenShift. Then you have the capability to take an existing container image that already exists and just build the artifacts for OpenShift. Here, the point comes if this container image is a Docker image and the Docker image requires root access, you might, you might get an, an, an error when, uh, when OpenShift detects that. You can also build con uh, applications from the OpenShift catalog, and we're getting more and more components into the OpenShift catalog to, to be able to include those. And the fourth possibility is from a Docker file. So if you have a description already how you want to build or how that uh, the container or, or the containers are built, you can use that Docker file, in, uh, import it into OpenShift, and then build your container and the artifacts um, and the operator, um, the, the different artifacts that, that are needed in um, OpenShift to do that, to, to build that application. There is a whole session that could be teached about this build. If you want to see that next time at the VM workshop, let me know. I think it would even be interesting to have a kind of, you know, hands-on on a such, um, with a such exercise. And with that said, development, you have the capability that are built in for logging and monitoring inside OpenShift. And you see the, the components here on the bottom, Fluent E, Elasticsearch, Prometheus, Grafana, for logging and monitoring, the cluster logging and monitoring operator, the Prometheus operator, the cluster and monitoring operator for with Grafana, with Fluent E and Elasticsearch. These cluster operators are subject to be moved from a uh, worker or from a compute node to an infrastructure node to free up the resources and free up, you know, the the the, the application to to let them breathe where in, in, their, in their own worker node, uh, and therefore uh, it is recommended to move these operators, the cluster op operators into infrastructure nodes. Okay, and, and, and we have recommendations here from, from the teams um, in, in Germany that, that are doing performance and they're doing you know, these evaluations to, to uh, externalize those from, from one node to an infrastructure node. It makes a lot of sense. 4.4 times better throughput on an x86 versus on, on Z. We see in different uh, environments, we see with different customers that it makes a lot of sense to evaluate and see depending on the application, depending on how big, how, uh, how the construct is and how the, the collocation is done or how the nature is of the application, where to run it and which component to run where, because as I mentioned, you can have those distributed and you can have them hybrid running even in multi-clouds. Um, the, the tests have shown that OpenShift on Linux one versus x86, we have there a throughput that is more than 2.5 and uh, lower latency, almost three, uh, three times lower latency with, with that container platform. So therefore it's, uh, it, makes, it makes a difference uh, even when we're looking at the parallel requests with an average latency smaller than 25 milliseconds. Because sometimes we got a question, well, you have all these components and you have OpenShift, is it really fast enough? Is it fast for me to, to, to run those applications? So therefore, it is the point where you need to evaluate and see, um, and based on our tests, it makes a lot of sense to look even at those applications which are dependent on um, an, an, an low latency. Another benchmark here, two times four more uh, ACMIR benchmark instances per core. So basically a per core um, comparison of uh, ZVM versus KVM on x86. Another comparison that makes a, a Linux one look very, very good for an OpenShift environment. Yeah, some performance experiences that we have in, um, that we have made for um, hints and tables for, um, CPU intensive workloads, network intensive workloads. So we, we have a corner now with OpenShift in the documentation in, in, uh, on, on, the, um, on the net. 
on our Linux on Z and, and Linux one uh, knowledge base, um, especially for, for OpenShift, we have the reference architecture there. We have the, the, uh, the tunings and best practices regarding the network setup for inside an, an cluster and then also how, how you build and, and where you have to look at to have an effective uh, response time in, in terms of network setup. Now, what we can build today is run our container native on Linux, run the container native on our secure service container on ZCX, or start to build an OpenShift environment and run the container managed by OpenShift. And therefore, OpenShift can today manage those containers in a KVM or ZVM environment. So therefore, you, you can have your master control planes and your worker or uh, compute nodes on one LPAR or on multiple LPAR spread, depending on the workload. And they can run side by side with other Linuxes as well. And they can run side by side with a with an, an um, secure service container or with the ZCX workload. What you see is we're going towards managing everything with OpenShift. Are we 100% done? No, we're not. So, that, but but it's it, it's the path to go forward and to manage those environments in that area. From a use case perspective, this is an overview. So, in the middle, you have OpenShift Container Platform. On the left side, Linux on Z workloads. Those customers which have Linux on Z already, they can enhance with OpenShift. Those customers which have ZOS already, they can enhance with OpenShift. And those which have Linux and ZOS as well. So therefore, you have the capability to do OpenShift as the, the, the flexible way of developing and scaling applications, and then more and more managing the entire environments towards um, you know, using OpenShift artifact, OpenShift capabilities. Um, the use cases that, that I wanted to just um, highlight are the data gravity with the co-location implementation, where you can access from OpenShift your data lakes or enterprise databases, transactional workloads in ZOS or, or Linux, application development consistency, as I mentioned before, develop once and then distribute and uh, run them where it makes more sense. Consolidation and TCO reduction, uh, the three dimension scalability. And we have seen this consolidation and TCO reduction in, in uh, the majority of the cases have um, you know, shown a tremendous effective way of running those applications. Blockchain and digital asset management with IBM blockchain platform can be managed with OpenShift today. So therefore, the introduction and managing blockchain with OpenShift. And then last use case is business continuity, where you can run your, exist your OpenShift side by side with existing um, environments and then um, use the capabilities of Z, take advantage of that, um, reduce the latency between the LPARs and the, the scalability, the, it's more predictable versus many distributed servers. There is a webcast that is where the link is on the bottom and you can you got this chart so therefore you can you can have a look and, and uh, listen to that one that's an hour another hour webcast where you can listen about these use cases in detail. I just had a brief uh, overview here for the Linux part if you if you're using Linux with OpenShift and integrate your transactional system for example with Temenos and we know that Temenos is now enabled for OpenShift so therefore that's that's going towards being OpenShift entirely for Oracle uh, customers, Oracle consolidation customers, or, or database warehouses. I would not recommend today to consider and uh, to to run a huge database uh, in OpenShift. I would I would say the applications that are scaling up and down run in OpenShift and connect to a backend database such as DB2 ZOS or Oracle or DB2 Warehouse. And then implement your front end web or mobile applications, the high scalability and, and uh, life cycle that can be done very effectively in OpenShift brings advantages here. And then extend with open source technologies your Linux environments. And the same picture for ZOS, where we have the capability to integrate with ZOS services, with ZOS data, DB2 ZOS, 
we can use ZOS Cloud Broker to even automate the build and management of ZOS subsystems like IMS, CICS. So therefore, you can build MQ, you can, you can build those, those systems using the, the uh, ZOS MF and ZOS, the provisioning toolkit, ZOS PT. And then there is a, an, an extension also for OpenShift on x86 to use ZOS VASI from, from the Open Mainframe uh, project that gives you the capability in OpenShift to develop and deploy directly into ZOS. And last but not least, interact with ZCX containers that might have a logic and you want to interact with that with, uh, in a flexible way. That's the, the capability to use OpenShift for that as well. And we have customers that are looking to even have batch workloads running in an OpenShift fashion to scale up and down those workloads on the, uh, based on their needs in parallel to their existing ZOS applications. So these are yeah, ideas and use cases that you might use. Now, as an outlook here, the hybrid multi-cloud vision is to use advanced cluster management for multi-cloud solutions on top, and then OpenShift being the, um, the component that you, can, that you manage the workloads in the different clouds and on-premise on the different architectures. And OpenShift is right now the only technology that can do that. And we are still not 100% there with all functions, but we are working on it. You see a couple of road, uh, roadmap items that are marked here that the work is ongoing towards OpenShift management. Infrastructure management was mentioned before, so we're, we're also looking at integrating infrastructure and automating with IBM Cloud Infrastructure Center towards OpenShift towards IPI, infrastructure provisioned uh, or installer provisioned infrastructure. And therefore, IBM Cloud Infrastructure Center has a uh, huge importance here. And uh, we had an hour ago, we had that presentation about this capabilities in detail with demo. And with that said, IBM Z and Linux One can be the core of your secure hybrid cloud. And therefore, go ahead, start with it. If you have any questions, we have an acceleration team that is looking to help to build, install, and run those, those environments. So therefore, let's go, let's um, find a way to work together and exploit these capabilities. If you want to have more lecture, here is the, the benefits in, in a link. Uh, if you need access to an OpenShift environment directly, the, op the Linux One Community Cloud gives you access directly to an OpenShift cluster that you can play around with it. If you want to download an OpenShift uh, component, you see them here and you see the last release came out with 4.7 as on all, all other platforms in February. We're expecting the next one coming out in a month. So therefore, um, if, if you need containers, there are three different areas for containers. From Docker Hub, you can get containers for Z. From the open source containerized software, you can get a container um, and, uh, for Z. And you can get from a Red Hat catalog container images for Z. So therefore, three different areas where you can get components and build your applications and, and start building uh, those solutions. If you are a partner, we have a partner network. Please sign up. Contact us if you want to build your applications towards a containerized solution for OpenShift. That's where we support you. And with that, Couple of links with a reference architecture, the OpenShift blog, OpenShift on Z, with the knowledge center, and the, the hints and tips for OpenShift and Linux. And with that, our new community, please sign up. Please, please sign up to the new community for Linux on Z and Linux One. That's to exchange information, to have a chat uh, between customers, between you and, and the development teams. That's a very useful uh, community that we created now. And, and with that, you can contact me directly. The, the name and the contact is on the slides and on this slide. I wish you all an, an, a wonderful day. And it was great to be here. I hope to see you all in person next year.